Well, it's working at the Terry Wilson Fishing Show again. Bit of a wild card today, people. I'm going to have to take this sweatshirt off in a minute because they've given a warm spell coming in. And uh, I'm hoping it's going to put fish on the surface. I'm at a couple of lakes or canal match lakes, tiny little match lake around here. Well, it's a lake, it's like a canal. Uh, I'm going to be having a look in there and um, they've got a great big giant lake over the back here with all the, uh, the carp guys in. And I had a tip off that it's really good floater fishing here, but I don't know which lake, the small lake or the big lake. So I'm just throwing some bread out. The bailiff said, oh yeah, sure, you'll have no trouble catching, you know, it's commercial. But you don't know with the atmospherics and the weather conditions, do you? So on the canal side, there's little holes, there's a huge amount of weed here. But there's like little holes, little pools. So I chucked half a dozen bits of bread out there, just moving around. I'm going to take... The thing is with floater fishing people, you throw out your floaters, and obviously if nothing takes them, you then go, oh, there's no fish there, and that's absolutely true. Whereas if you're just fishing with boilies or bait on the bottom, you're always living with that hope, aren't you, that it could go any minute, it could go any minute, it could go any minute. But with floater fishing, you're looking at all the <laughs> biscuits, dog biscuits, floaters, whatever you're using, bread, on the surface, so you think, <laughs> nothing's eating it, so there are no fish. So the first thing I do when I come to a fishery like this I've never been to before, is throw some bread out, throw some biscuits out, and just see if something comes up on top. Going to be looking at basically just floater fishing, but using float, free line, depending on the action on the surface. I'm going to look in both of these places. At the moment, before I even tackle up, I throw some little bits of bread in there, just in case in those pools, it takes them a while to find it. Now it's going to be noisy, people. It is, well, I've come as far away from this motorway as I can, but it's probably going to be picked up in the mic. So the motorway is just so you know, over the back of those cars there, shooting along. That is the motorway. It's a very slight wind drift today because I was supposed to be boat fishing. I thought, where can I go? So the wind will hopefully drift across. Some nice lilies over that way, just over there. Hopefully the wind will be drifting and I've come to this side so the wind can push any bread up against the island because I figure near islands is where these guys normally put their boilies. So that's maybe where the fish are. So let's get tackled up. But it's going to be as muggy as they say it's going to be. I'm going to have to get this top, lose the top, get my polarizing glasses on. So one of the first things I like to do, because I'm on like whatever this is, it's my pike gear. Well, it's not my pike wheel, it's an Avon Rod's pike wheel, 12 pound line, is line can be a bit clock springy so the first uh, method I'm going to use is just a straight free line if I do see anything come up which will be just the weight of a hook so I'm going to pull some line off like this so I want it to cast straight I've caught quite a few pike on this so it's used the drag so just heat it up and it makes it go limp you can also feel for any weaknesses along there just check it for any rough marks you might have you might have had a pike or a carp that's dragged it over a, a branch or a snag or something and it pulls it all out nice and straight smooth it don't burn your fingers just do it like this and you're fine look it goes nice and limp and that should facilitate a better smoother cast and then what happens is what you mustn't do is floater fishing catapult straight out miles and then the wind gets it and takes it even farther because that way you won't be able to cast it with just the weight of the hook and the bait you're going to need what we call a controller float which I personally don't like using or a waggler float now you can see it's coming off the spool there I'll show you there against there clock springy and you'll see when I bring it into where I smoothed it there look I've taken all those little springs out of it just a little tip the first of the totally awesome tips and now I require an incredibly complicated rig of a hook two three four five five and a half for luck through the hole a little bit of spit pull it down snip it off this, by the way, is where I shut my hand in the tripod while fighting a big chub that I was excited about. 
I like to snip my tag ends off inside the box like that. Then all we require is a piece of crust like this. Just once, twice, but then I pinch tight around the doughy part around the eye of the hook there. I'm going to dip it once to give it some weight and then just lob it out if I see a fish. So I'm just going to go in these gaps here and indeed I've seen a tiny dimple over there. Now I threw the bread in here and while I was tackling up it's drifted over there by the island. So I feel I need to get some more bread in. There's a fish moving over there. I've got no idea on size. Now that one, two fish. That one, to be honest, is going to probably pass the limit of me free lining, but I'm going to give it a go. Maybe from that other swim. First, I'm going to bait some up here to allow for that bread to drift in there. Dead simple, 40p loaf of bread. I break it in half. You can do it with scissors. Break it up in pieces like this, look. Not too big. Don't waste anything, Graham. Then just give them a, a gentle squeeze like this, just to hold them. Because when they hit the water, they'll spread out. you see them spread away. In fact, I'll tell you what, I think a lot of that bread that I threw in there is gone. So that's about the distance I wanted to, I could hook them at there, but you see it's gone about another 15 feet past it. Fish moving over in the uh, leaves. The other problem being, there's leaves over there, leaves here. And, uh, I might want to get them up if I can, feeding in this area here. Now this one, we're a bit closer to the area of fish. I'm just going to give it like, one dip. And then just sort of toss it. That's how I describe it. And you'll find it comes off the hook. <laughs> I did say it was past my uh, casting zone for free lining. Let's try a piece of crust, proper crust. That's a better piece, that's a better piece, I know. Oh, fish over there moving. That's the last batch I threw out. Yeah, that is probably on the limit of free liners. I've got, a, I've got activity on those others I threw over there. Look, 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 just watch, there's about three or four bits. Now this could be really small fish. Look, I don't know, they could be two pounders. I can't at the moment see, I should get my polarizing glasses on. Right, if I put mine in there now, there is only two pieces left. Check the drag. Always check the drag. You want enough to set the hook. It's not bolt rigging. I'm going to move myself now. You might be able to see there's shiny water here and a bit of dark shadow there. I'm better off if I can move to the shadow here. I've got a bow in the line there, which I can pick up fast and move. And now I'm going to move back, so as it drifts, it drifts into that shadow line on the right, and I should, should be able to see the fish take and or the line where it enters the surface of the water tweak and pull. All right, let's try a longer cast. Now, if you're casting longer with a, a piece of flake and nothing else on there, I find if you have the if you have, just more for beginners and kids. If you have it shallow like that, it's going to whip cast through much. I'd like a nice long drop, build up the swing slowly, and yes, yeah, toss it through the air almost. You'll find that's much better. I'm not a million miles away. I've got two pieces of crust on there. They just split apart, so it needs to be a decent sized fish to take that down. Doesn't quite look right. And of course, I've cast out there, and fish start taking down here. Right boys, I got hooked up there. 
I've missed about five or six. I thought it might be the lines too heavy, but I have got a fish hooked up. This is the best of it. Look, I've got a strong line, but I've got a decent reel and a rod that I can. Uh, yeah, it feels bigger than bigger than five pounds actually. Got a decent Avon rod, trusty old Avon rod. Big hoop on it. It's called a lot of big fish. Gives you a bit of sport. I'm just easing this one towards me. Don't want him going around the side here, which he appears to be doing. Well, I had this down as three pounds to start with. It doesn't feel like a. It doesn't feel like a three pounder. Let's have a look at him. Now, sometimes you know you can actually find that some of those little dimpling rises that you think a small fish actually aren't. I've, I've experienced that before, especially one night I was out about two o'clock in the morning on a flat calm night at Berry Hill Fisheries Main Lake and I thought what are all these little dimpling noises and I could see the dimples like in the, in, in the what well it wasn't barely moonlight, night light on the sheen I thought they might be rud. I had a go no they were they were double figure carp just nipping and I did I think got two and I think I pulled another two out. This fish isn't three pounds. What the hell is this? Sorry about this, people. I thought I'd just wheel it straight in and go off and catch another one at another lake. He's digging and digging. I haven't seen him. That's so nice to get a fish if we hand early on. There's one, two, three now. So I possibly might move my gear up here and just work on the one area. I want to see this fish, people. Maybe it's just a feisty six pounder. It is deceiving with the Avon rod. You want a great big poker of a carp rod. One of those huge big giant pit reels they use. Obviously just wheel it straight through the rod rings. But I've got a lot of pressure on this one. I can tell that by the bend in the rod. It's like a tuna, like a blackfin tuna. What the heck? I don't think he's that big, I really don't. But... Where is he? No, oh, he's only about sixes and sevens. Look how I travel light. The mat, a loaf of bread. The scales are only up there, I don't need scales for this. Don't need scales for him. Oh, I don't know what they feed these fish on other than drinks. It's, it's like a wild carp, the way it's going. Thin common. Goodness me, that is some fight, I have to tell you. And that's on heavy line as well. What the heck? Yeah, we got him. We got him. Yeah, just your run of the mill. Oh, he is fatter. No, no, tell a lie. Tell a lie, folks, he is a bit fatter. Hook pops out. Don't want to needle on this mud. Lovely gold colour to it. Nice tail. And they have a dipping facility here to you know, protect these fish. And you can see why, when you get one in condition like this, look, that's a beauty. And I'm saying, he's, you know, he's gonna go, he might go eight, no wonder he was feisty. I just slide him back. That is a calm common. A calm common. That is most unlike a common carp. In he goes, I feel a wet camera. Oh, that was sweet. Well, there you go, free lining, guys. You know what we do next? Yes, that's right, we get some more bread out there. Well, I'm just uh, walking back past that canal, choked, weed choked stretch here, and I've seen some dimples, little ripples. That tells me something's found my bread there. So I've got to get a hand wipe. 
I think I'll move. I probably just look. It probably doesn't matter where I go to, does it? Probably doesn't. I need the hand wipe. Please don't let me have left it in the car. No, it's here. Out of choice, I'd sooner fish somewhere like that, in amongst that weed, heavy line. Spot the fish just laying and sunbathing on the surface. That's good fun. Absolute visual fishing. Okay, it's got a bit quiet here. <clears throat> no, I've lost another fish. And the wind has picked up a bit, you see by the ripples there, that the food is going pretty quickly to the far bank. So I'm trying to throw it now so it jams up against the island. If it goes through past there, if it goes past there, way out in the middle, you probably won't get it to at all. But generally carp will run around the edges of those islands as well. And I just want to show you, other than the bread there, how about these for floaters, guys? Now you can soak them. Just regular mixed dog biscuits, throw them out as they are, but I like to filter all these big ones out and if you soak them in a wet towel, say the night before you go fishing, they swell up and absorb the water. They go spongy and they cast miles, they're like bullets and that's a nice size. But of course all these other, you can either soak or you can, you can throw them in and they'll crunch them up and you get the smaller fish. And as well as that you've got the humble, that's right, marshmallow. Either whole for big carp or break them in half. Or if you really want to give them a taste, the ones that the ladies love putting on the cakes. That's it, mini marshmallows. Now these things, let me show you in the water. I'll show you a few, but I'll try and do this one-handed if I can. These are just dry biscuits here. So you can see, they just float like, well, regular dog biscuits would do. But the marshmallows are very, very buoyant. They actually seem to ride higher in the water because they're very sort of spongy. So hopefully you can see that there. And they'll drift out all the way over. And the big ones are unbelievable. In fact, these ones, I tend to break these in half. But these ones are like high-vis ones. You can see those from Mars way. In fact, if I come up high, I've got two or three and some minis right up against the rushes and the bankside vegetation over there. You might still see the white dots. I couldn't possibly see a dog biscuit over there, but I can see that. And they'll get pushed around the edge there and down the side of that island. And probably out to where that man's casting and then have a wonderful day's fishing. Now, in between wandering around, I've actually thrown a few pieces of bread into the gaps as I showed you close in here and I, and I just see the the reeds and the rushes and the weeds just fish dimple just move i know there's action and they're not big fish i'm going to try and catch one of those on free line as well I just see if i can see a fish now the benefit here is if they don't take on the top and they might not but i just see movement you can pinch a piece of this bread flake like this a little bit hard around the hook and it sinks down you can either watch the bread flake disappear or watch the line tweak. That's another way of fishing for them. I think I'll try and find one and put it just in front of his nose. The traffic is absolutely roaring. None stop on the motorways. Right, let's see if I can spot a fish. I'm not going to wet it yet until I physically see a carp. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to basically just dab it in the water once to give me a bit of casting weight. There's a little ripple there, you see. Oh, oh, oh! Just a disturbed one. I think he's over there. I think he's over there. I'll keep down low. I think, to be honest. That one was in so close, I spooked him. The problem is I've got the camera on my head, so I can't, I can't shut down that light which is right in my face. So I might have a take and miss a fish. There he is. Bosh. On his nose, on his nose, and he's got it. He's in the weed big time, people. 
Let's hope he kicks out. Let's hope he kicks out. I've got a lot of pressure on him, that's why you use strong line. There's short pumps. He's burying big time. I don't know who's more surprised, him or me. He's off. Pinged off. I've got the hook back, watch guys. Nothing broken. Just the hook pinged off. A shame, but it happens. That's why we use strong line. <laughs> right, that's obviously queered that swim up, so I'm going to take some more bread, just walk along and look for another another hole. This, the sunlight in the face is a bit of a pain. I can't sort of shade it. The fish are going to see me before I see them. There's one, just down there. Just down there, he's not taking. I'm not going to move because I'm right by the right. If I move out in the open, out in there, he's going to see me. I put the bread down there and he has totally ignored it, unlike the other one which just swam straight up and sucked it down. Okay, now they could move from swim to swim here. I'm going to have to use these bushes here as a bit of a screen. You can see what I've got, that, that shiny glare there. It's just impossible to see anything there. If I move out to change the angle, they could see me. Well, I've seen one, two, whoopsie. I've seen two small carp in here. It's very, very clear. And I've seen another shape which is laying dead still, which I don't have down as a carp. But I don't exactly know what it, uh, what it could be, but it seems to be a fish. But it's laying very, very still. I see no roach, small fry, or anything in there. But very, very clear. Lovely clear water, you can spot fish in there for certain. I guess I get quite a lot of leaves in here in the uh, early winter. As you can see, it's a pleasant enough spot. There's guys pole fishing up there, but I don't see any action. I haven't seen anybody catching anything on the pole yet. One guy had a carp in the lake I'm fishing in, but. In the match lake section here, nothing. Well, that's the benefit of being mobile. A net, a mat, a tub of bait and a rod. Oh, and a camera in case you actually do catch a fish. Spotted one boys, spotted one. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. That's a decent fish. Oh, I can't. I don't think I can twitch that. I don't think I can move it. Where has he gone? Can you guys see? Oh, I see him. Right in front of me. I'm trying to sort of slap it down so that he can hear that slap of the bread but he is not taking at all. Now I've lost him again now. Well, didn't uh, see that carp again. I will come and look here. So they're quite a decent fish. So I figure what I'm going to go back here. I'm going to try and feed them, get them going again. Try and get one more on the free line and then I might have to go to the float and go a little bit further out. Well people, I'm back on again. Nothing like that was gone quiet. I walked over here, baked it up again and Drifted out of range. If I do get this one, this is right on the limit of my free lining. So I'm using a bigger and bigger piece of crust, which means I'm missing more and more fish. Well, wow, this one's right in there. He's right under the bank. Look at him trying to get in the roots and that there. Trying to give him a bit of side strain here. Just lay it over, let him pull on that rod. As many a fish has done for the last 50 years. I wonder how many tons and tons of fish my two Ryobi Avens have uh, actually landed. Oh, nice fish, eight pound plus. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, eight pound plus. That's my ammo, that's the ammo, you can see, you know what I'm using, we're not catching them on the maggots, we're catching them on plain old bread. Now those were very, very small. 
oh, takes off the surface and I still had them down a small carp but as you can see where it's gone I say seven eight pounds they go like crazy so I just had the one lost two but exciting fishing I have to say make sure he's pulling against that bend of the rod to tie him out this one does not want to roll he does not want to roll over must be getting close there he is that's a nice chunky fat one get in he's in let's have a look at him mirror this time nice to get one of each and again a nice looking Chunky fat fish there. Good condition. In good nick. Quite a steep head to it. You see a humpback. Some of a fast grower. Probably going to be a big fish in the future. Let's slide it back. And now I'm going to try and put a waggler float on. Tip this kitty off. Away he goes. Put a waggler float on and show you the similar rig but it enables me to get a bit more distance and it's highly highly effective okay so I've, I've rigged up rigged up there for you basically the same setup there's my hook same line straight through to a waggler float there okay locked either side by a BB shot so it spins like this all for beginners expert carp anglers go back to your bed chairs this is for beginners, trying to catch them a few extra fish. Novices, people just starting. So it's locked either side by one of those shots. Now it doesn't have to be locked, because that is a self-loaded float. Self-writing, so it's got the weight there, and it will shot down to, say, that yellow marker. But you can add additional shot to take it down to here or there. Now what happens is, with the carp, if it's close, I can see his mouth close on the bait, and I know where to strike. A lot of the time they're crafty, they come up and they knock it and nose it and bump it. They're just trying to knock it off. You think that's a take, you see the ring, you strike, nothing. Great, the carp loves that because you just struck the bait off the hook. Bet your life within a minute, second, sometimes he comes back and takes a piece, you've just struck off. So what this does is give me an indication of when that fish moves this way. It'll just tweak that float. Sometimes the float doesn't go under. I've done really well with it. Sometimes the float doesn't go under, it'll just do that. That tells you the fish has moved that way with it. So what you do is you'll see your crust and you'll see your float because this won't cost that far. It just gets me a little bit extra. But you'll be able to see the crust and the float, but you don't strike on the swirl around the bait. Forget that, forget that. You can sort of stay on edge, but you just wait for this float to dip and then whippo, flash strike, and you should pick a fish up. Well, if we don't, I'm going to look really stupid, aren't I? Right, bait. A piece of crust with this because I'm casting a bit farther but I'm using the end crust of the bread listen if you get an uncut loaf it's much much better but I'll show you what I do so you see me using the here the edges of the uh, actual bread here you see me use the edges and especially the corner like this you can it's quite tough on the corners but on the end of a sliced loaf I just get cheapest cheapest sliced loaf here right this is the best for casting, but it curves up. It's a little bit thin on the outside, so I just do this, and it's much easier. You'll save more bread by taking and cutting it, your pieces off with scissors because it makes it much neater and you're much more uniform for casting. These bits, don't get me wrong, break them up like this. Do not waste them. Throw them in the water. I can see already that there's fish over on the first batch I threw in that's drifted out of my range. Whether I reach them with this float, I do not know. Then you get yourself a length like this and just go about half inch, something like that. You don't want them too big. I've got five out of one strip. Don't let them dry out in the sun. Very easy to do on a hot sunny day. And for this, all I do is exactly the same. I go through the white first there. Hopefully you guys can see this. Through the white, roll it, 
without breaking it if I can just push it into the brown give it one dip when you cast it and get it out there let me show you probably down here is easier what can happen is when you cast you're going to get some drift so the float's going to be set like this and this piece is going to be snaky and loose well that means the carp can take it suck it down blow with it play it play with it and it doesn't even register on the float so you want to sort of continually just try if you've got the wind blowing this way you can hold against the wind and keep it nice and straight like this so you get an immediate take so it's going to look like this in the water crust there you see that float there now it's up to you how far away you want to put that crust in the float I don't like the float being too close to the crust I saw I put it at that sort of distance and you want it close enough that it does register so I see nothing out there at the moment but I'm going to heave it out there and hope definitely get much farther much farther and I just mend that mend the float so it straightens out between the float and the crust and then wait but when you see the swell do not strike until you see that float dip and when it does dip you've got to be lightning fast you will still miss them but on the other hand you'll be catching fish at a distance you wouldn't previously have caught at on a windy day like to this you can see all my baits going that back towards that island the point of the island might even pay me to go in the swim next door and channel it that way rather than have it go round the island down the lake They've eaten pretty much everything out, so I'm going to put a solitary one out there now. And see if that makes any difference. Very often, they'll eat everything you think they've gone. And indeed, they might have done. But there's only one piece of crust out there, so they should isolate it and hopefully find it. Unfortunately for me, because I'm impatient, I've also baited up under this tree, <laughs> tree and they're coming up there now. Maybe I should go there. If I see another swirl, I'll be over there. He's right by the float. Oh, he's actually taken the shot under the float, I think. Then there's a big fish, might indeed be a small one. I'm in line with the shade of that tree, the reflection, dark reflection, so I can see the bait and the float. A piece of fishing line hanging down from the tree, which tells me other people have fished it as well. There's the fish over there moving. He needs to cut back to the right. I've got one on the float, people. I've missed one. I know I've got one hooked up. He stripped a load of line off. In fact, I've burnt my fingers up here trying to slow it down and switch the camera off. Hopefully, we get to show you one. Floating crust on the top in conjunction with a waggler float. I'm telling you, it is an absolutely deadly method for distance fishing. Not, not true distance. Because true distance you use a what they call a controller float, which you will try, but it doesn't have the sensitivity of the waggler. You will see it's heavier bulk. I personally don't like them. If you can get a heavy waggler, it takes three, four treble A or a couple of swan, something like that, a couple of swan shot SSGs, then I think you'll find it's more. Oh, it's a nice fish too, yeah. Come on, my boy, you come to Uncle Graham. You know you want to. You can see that waggler float there spinning. The, well, sometimes when you strike, the shot slides down a bit. And this one has, it's opened up that gap, the locking shot either side of the float. The temptation is to bite it down even harder to stop it slipping, but that will, could, could weaken the line. If you're on, say, five pound line, I'm on 12, but a lighter line doesn't take much to nick it does it wow i'll tell you what boys they do go in there they can pull your string oh yeah don't go under that tree i bet there's some big carp under there in the night well second cast i think that was in this spot wow you wouldn't want a 16 pound would you not an even right he's in let's go and check him out on the map and look at those beautiful scales on that one. I've got to say, this comes under the category of a commercial fishery, of course it does. But they are very, very nice fish. Here we go, look, Nile Monster. Six, that might go six on a good day. 
but on the regular flow it's one I've caught that I might not otherwise have got. I shall have another go with the waggler and see if I can't get one a tad bigger. It's about dead on 10 there guys, dead on 10. Nice fish. I thought he was close to the uh, magic 10 and there you go. Great big chunky fat one. Nice common. Two on the free line, two on the waggler. It's certainly a method that's highly successful. Away he goes. Time for lunch, I feel. Well, before I show you the next rig with a larger float, I'm going to investigate the pool there because I am. Um, Definitely seeing dimples that are bigger than roach and rud. I wonder if my friend the carp is back. Now I've got to wait until wait until I see the fish. There's a small one over there. Bam. There are small fish just knocking at it. I wonder what they are, whether they are roach or rug. I don't really mind when they do that knocking the bait about because I do think that attracts the, uh, attracts the carp in. They come over to see what's, what's cooking, what's going on. What's going down. Hopefully that throat is going to engulf that crust down. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Turned off. Wow, he's spooky. It's a small one. It's like a three pounder, very spooky. Came in from the left in the wee bed. You see, he liked, he liked the fact those little ones are knocking it and banging it around. Oh, what's that? Is that a roach down there? That bait's nice and wet and soggy. It actually hits the water with a sort of a slap. Just gonna put it in the middle there and let the little ones chew on it. They're going crazy for it. They might just bring the uh, carp back out again. Here he comes, boys. Here he comes. Here he comes. I've got him. Now I've got to keep him out. Oh, he's going for the same weed again. Oh, he's off again. <laughs> he knows that weed bed is his sanctuary. Oh, dear. Well, at least you got the strike. That was sweet, that one. Oh, well, I think that's his swim done. That's 2 0 to the carp. Okay, so here's something he could use for really getting out there in distance. This one is one of old woodies up in the Hereford. Uh, river float, but you could do bottom end only like this. And fish it like a waggler. And that takes four SSG. So that's a lump to cast out. So it's a river float, but you can double up and use it, should you so wish. This one, it got right on it, it's so small, I don't know what it is, but it's got a weight down there and an eye through the top, so your line comes through the top. Same principle as a waggler, but it's like this, but it's gonna, it's gonna tug that way rather than tug from the bottom, which the waggler pulls under. I'll probably try this one. This is the same, but a larger version called surface float, surface carp. Same principle, it's got like a brass weight there. Ring at the top, thread your line through, you stop it either side with a shot or swivel tree, you so wish. And a similar one here, which is bottom end only, with the ring by, it looks like it's, I can't even see the ring on that one, where is it? Can't even see the ring. I've used that one pike fishing as well. So double up, we'll, we'll try this small one there. So I feel sure with the line I've got, that's gonna give me enough weight to cast. Okay, this one you can see, there's the controller. Same sort of distance away from the crust. Let me put a piece of crust on there so you can see. Now this one I'm quite happy to fish, a bigger piece of crust, so I'm gonna put two pads together here. I'm well, quite happy in that. Also when wet, see it just lays like this. There you go, hopefully it'll keep that still. You see it lays like that. Like same, the same thing applies, you want to keep the crust straight as long as you can with the trace. So there's fish way way down there, I don't know if I'm going to reach them but I shall give it a go. If not I can go to those other heavier controllers. Now these I find a lot less sensitive. The, the carp have got to be, I'm way, way out by that island by the way. Um, 
almost suicidal to uh, really pull aggressively against that float. And of course, the minute they feel that resistance, they're going to want to spit it out. They're going to know it's not normal. Whereas with a waggle float, it just slides delicately under the surface. They don't really even know it's there. So we'll see where we go from here. If we can get another fish out of it, it would be nice. moving to the right and they're just moving left so they're not a million miles away and because it's at such long distance I've moved myself across to the right hand side of the swim because I want to strike through this arc here I want to come whack back as far as I can to pick all that slack line up out there he's close now this one he's taking bread he's probably he's oh I see him spit the float he spit the float didn't take the float but he took the crust and he felt that float yeah, absolutely no question of that. If I'd have had a waggler, I do have a waggler with a long antenna which would be more delicate. I feel we might have picked that fish off, but we'll leave it there because there's two or three fish moving at distance. And of course at distance they should be a little bit more confident. Well, it's hard to believe I've uh, walked around the whole fishery, the entire fishery, had a look at a stretch of river. I don't really fancy that to be honest, maybe it's a winter water but it's pretty shallow with half a dozen chub I could spot in there, small ones. So I'm going to come back tomorrow, but I thought, no, I think I'll pass on that one. I can't believe it. I've chucked a load of bread. I've been to get the last of my bread. Apart from losing those two carp in there, wait for this. I chucked a load of bread and there's still carp. Keep popping in and popping out. Now, I wonder if that is the same fish or there's different ones. Anyway, I may well return. I'm going for it now, folks. It's quarter to three in the afternoon. I've plastered bread all along here and we'll see if we can't get one on this controller and this bigger fish moving over there as well. Now, here's a tip. I've scattered here because the breeze is pushing the bread away from me, which is why I'm down to using the controller now. So you can throw your bait in here, just let it drift away. Or there might be a situation where you want to get it out there. Now, you can't catapult bread very far. It's so light, or can you? So break your bread up in the normal segments like this. And then all you've got to do Get yourself a pouch, like a ground bait pouch, that doesn't, if I show you that way, it doesn't squeeze like this and com compress your bait, otherwise it just sticks to the pouch and bursts everywhere. This is a rigid one for balls of ground bait. I'll wet it first. Then, look, just put your bread under the water. Two seconds. A little bit of a squeeze. And I'm using the wind as well behind me, don't forget up in the air watch watch boom it bursts and spreads and that could be somewhere that i want to get oh I mean, the carp will like that look straight on it straight on it because i'm in that zone a little bit farther over and it's nice wet soppy bread so i need to follow that one up with my hook bait god so many tips in this one i'm gonna to have to lay down i keep looking over there i keep thinking that bread goes you know I think I'm going to chuck some more in there. Hey, oh look, there's a swell there. I'm going to have to, I don't want to drop the controller in here. I just need a bare hook bait in here. You've seen me twice before. Is it going to be third time lucky? Right, I'm way out there with the big piece of crust. Now, as I said earlier, this is a heavier controller, so therefore I feel they have to be bigger carp and more aggressive to actually move that. When it's a water that's fished quite a bit like this one, 
they're not going to be quite so stupid as to want to drag something the size of a miniature toilet system across the surface. See, they're on my bread, but if that was a waggler float, I wait for the float to move. He, he, he took the crust down then, it popped up because he felt the drag of the float. I've got it. Now I've got him. Now I've got him. He's smoking. Now I've got him. Now I've got him. Now I've got him. Or has he got me? That was some take. But you can see what I mean, how they bump that crust. And then they, they're trying to knock it off is what they're trying to do. But it has to be a decent fish to move that controller. Is this going to be a decent fish or am I going to be fighting a two pounder? I feel it's a decent one by that swirl. Come on, Mr. Fish. Now he's pulling hard for a long way out, this one. So I'm figuring this should be what I said, you know, an eight, 10 pounder. Who knows? The way these things fight in here, they could be a four pounder on steroids. All this fun with a loaf of bread and some dog biscuits. Well, to be honest, I don't even need the dog biscuits because the bread is what they're, uh, they're taking on. He's going to crank off again in a minute. It looks like a nice mirror, this one. I'm trying to get you the best shots I can. There's the controller. You can see it just slides up the line. I did have a little shot up there to stop it sliding up when I cast, but wow, these fish fight. These fish fight. And that was a gigantic piece of crust. And hopefully it's a gigantic carp. Oh, this rod's on the maximum. It's on the maximum. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, <laughs> that's on 12 pound line as well. Good little line. Oh no, that's a nice fish, no wonder. No wonder he's giving me grief. No wonder people. He ain't done yet. Oh my word, that is definitely a double. Get out, don't tangle, don't tangle, don't tangle. Don't tangle, come on, kick this way. I forgot him, hook's pinged out. Look. Look, there's a hook, he's pinged out. And the fish is in the net. Oh my word. Was that lucky? This is a good double figure fish, people. Oh my word. The hook pinged out. Look at that one. The hook actually pinged right out and I got him in the net. I'm putting him 13, maybe. Stand up for it, people. It is. 13, 11. I was right first time around, 13. I called that one right. 13, 11. Wait till you see this one. Off the top, with a controller. That's three different techniques I've showed you. Just quickly, 13, 11. Good double figure fish, what? What a beauty. Oh, it feels 13, 11 too. Three different techniques for you. And they all work, but my money is on the waggler as being the best one. Well, guys, I was uh, having a lot of trouble with my polarizing glasses, which are dark, and the lights go in now, getting lower. I thought, I must put my glasses on. Oh, that must be my glasses case. So I try and put the glasses on. Watch this. What the hell? They're joke ones that I put some stickers on, having a laugh with Mike when we were doing one of his TA Outdoor show. So now I realise I've got my reading glasses, I've stuck the tape on, even better. Now I want to use them. When I tear them off, all the paper's stuck. I've got to soak them off, so I still can't tie the knot. How stupid is that? Well, very stupid. But funny at the time, have a good laugh. Fish out there and moving. That is a big piece of crust for somebody to find. Carp's on it, carp's on it, carp's on it. No, he's knocking it. Mine's a crust right over on the back corner there. Decent sized carp. He knows there's a hook in it. There's a, here he comes again, here he comes again. No, he's trying to knock it off the hook. He feels the line. And there's a smaller carp on the left there. 
We're going to leave that to just drift on the edge of the weed. Oh man, he so nearly had it then. He so badly wants it. Here he comes. Now, it might be too far on top of the weed now. Just have to take a risk and move it. Off. You can just move the crust slowly like this, just draw it over the top of the weed. I might not, not get another cast out of this one. It's a small one, I don't want him, I wanted the big one over the back, so I'm gonna get over in the open water is where I want. Oh, here comes a small one. Is he gonna nail it? He's gonna nail it. Ah, got him anyway. He's going for the same weed all the others went for. Not in the same class as uh, all the other fish. It's a different section, isn't it? But let, it's a fish, it's a fish, it's a fish. Come through that weed, boy. Oh, it's a bonus. He's got weed over his head, so that, that can keep him quiet. He's only a small one. A little small one, but still a fish. Boom. I don't know what to say. You know that last cast? Ooh. Back on the controller. Seven or eight pounds, I guess. Seven anyway. Still going strong on them now. He intercepted it, so that doesn't count, does it? That's not a last cast. For a last cast, you have to catch nothing. I'm sure you guys know what it's like. Please don't tell my wife. And don't ever believe me when I say I'm packing up, having a last car cast, and I'll be home by five o'clock. Um, it's quarter to five and I've got an hour and a half drive. Or it's just the way it is. I've got another one of six pounds. And I've just loaded it up. And this really, really is the last one. If I get it in. Nice fish. I can't imagine how many fish. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I hope that camera's running. I hope that camera's running. I think it's Uno da Bello. That's Hispaniola for a big one. Uno da Bello. I thought he was going well, I've got to admit. But then they all go well and it's deceiving. I've had a couple ping off, but this is another chunk. Come on, babe, come on. I've only got a limited amount of cord here, so I can't. I want to roll. Oh, no, he's not going to roll, is he? Now he's got him. Now he should roll. No, he won't. Oh, no, he won't. He's seen the net. Not quite. Oh, yes. 13. This is number 14. Yes, yeah, a double. Let's put him on the mat for you. Pretty close on the last one, I reckon. 12 something, this one. Yeah, it's a double, boys. It's 12 pounds even, that one. 12 pounds even. So there are some really chunky fish in here to be caught. Listen, there's no need to go sleeping overnight, boys. The size of this thing. What a session. Listen. Thanks for watching Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit Mike's TA Outdoors going mad. Hit the subscribe on both. Hit the like bell, hit the button, hit whatever you want. I don't care what you hit. Hit the keyboard if you want. Not those ranting ones, they're boring. I just remove and block them. Right, let's get this kitty back. <laughs>